Skinnamarinky dinky dink, skinnamarinky do. It's time for another episode of 359 for you, episode 153 with Roger Chang and Ben Fox Rubin. Good morning, everybody. Morning. My body is ready. <laughs> Thanks, Reggie. Uh, what's on the show today, guys? Uh, what's on the show? We're going to be talking about Apple. Uh, app- well, what's new, right? Big surprise. We're talking about Apple. We haven't oh. talked about Apple for like three days. I know. It's time to talk about like Apple. Like three minutes, Three ben. minutes, really. Come on. Yeah. We've been talking about Snapchat and Pokemon All right, Go. So, we're, yeah, we're going to be talking about Apple. We're, uh, you know, as the year is winding down, we're going to talk a little bit about what we expect for next year. Right. And uh, next up, we'll we'll talk about uh, a story that Alfred wrote. Uh, he's too busy to be doing the podcast today, but uh, we're, right. we're going to be discussing iris scanning technology and whether that's the future of biometrics in yes. your phone. To hell with passwords. <clears throat> and then lastly, Google or Alphabet uh, is reportedly killing plans for the self-driving car for its own standalone self-driving car. right so uh ben's gonna that's gonna introduce that i'll try that. i'll try without fumbling as always if you have any questions leave them in the comment section our producer brian will uh, pick out the best and we will try and answer them try, try. is the keyword yes all right let's get this recording underway and here we go in three two Welcome to the 359, where we talk about the top tech news of the day and all the crap we want to throw in. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. As we start to wind down the year, let's start looking at some of the big companies going. Oh, sorry, I have keep to, going. All right, keep going. As we start, as we start to wind down the year, let's start looking at what some of the big companies are doing next year. First up is Apple. This was sort of a ho hum year for the company, but. Uh, things can be changing in 2017. We're looking at radically redesigned iPhone, new designs for iPad, Apple Watch, even maybe even the Mac. So, I don't know. Are you excited? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I am. I think maybe. I mean, like, look, next up, next September is a pretty far, far way away. Yes. They they just came out with the iPhone Seven, and it appears as though the iPhone Seven is selling well, despite the fact that they got rid of the headphone jack. And we'll see how many of these new technologies will actually be in the next phone. Right. It might just be a wish list at this point. That's that's at least a what bit is it? of wireless charging, edge to edge screen. Right. I think the edge to edge screen and the no home Makes button will be there. For you. Yes. I yeah. would love the waffle. Maker technology. Yeah. That would be really nice. It's called Waffle Bar. I waffle. waffle touch. Apple Waffle. Waffle Touch. So, <laughs> it's waffle also, Touch is actually kind of catchy. So uh, we also looked at the possibility that the Apple Watch is going to get a redesign, which yep. I think is interesting. Uh, just anecdotally, I've been seeing more Apple Watches out in the world. Yeah. So, so I think it's it's a thing now. It's a right. thing. That it got panned for it's a while It's not a now. complete bust, but it's also not, It's you know, people aren't lining up to buy an Apple Watch. I think it's, if it were obviously a smaller company, it would be a huge success. But for Apple, it doesn't really make a significant dent to their revenue or their bottom line quite yet. Right. But I think uh, with... With a redesign, we'll see what ends up happening, and maybe they'll keep selling them. It seems like they will. Well, so with the re- radically redesigned phone, though, I mean, a lot of people are expecting that this huge pent-up demand for a new, a radically new iPhone mm-hmm. is really going to drive Apple to have its its best year ever. Super cycle. So, this one was described. There you go. Next up, our own Alfred Ng took a look at iris scanning technology and believes that it'll be as commonplace in phones by 2018 as fingerprint readers are on phones now. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, are you ready to stare down your phone to unlock it? I think that with with Touch ID, uh, people are now used to the concept of biometric scanning. Yep. They they do it with their you know thumbprint all the time, their fingerprint. So this to me doesn't seem like it's scary tech. I might be wrong about that, but I it, it appears as though people will be reasonably comfortable I, with this idea. I, I don't think it's scary tech. I think you, you make a good point. I think people are are familiar and comfortable with biometrics. I think. Iris scanning is sort of the next step up, and people acknowledge that you know it's more secure than your mm-hmm. fingerprint. Um, I just don't know if people are actually gonna like hold their phone up, their eyes up to their phone to like unlock it every time. It's not I, not I quite also, as convenient. Just the, the concept of passwords too to make passwords more powerful or useful. Um, you have to add special characters. You have to change them all right. the time. So getting rid of these obviously also useful. So last, Google is reportedly scrapping plans to build a self-driving car with no steering wheel or pedals, which sounds kind of scary. (laughs) It may instead partner with automakers. This comes after Apple reportedly scaled back its plans to do their their Titan project, project, their own uh, self-driving car concept. So, yeah. 
I mean, it shows there are significant challenges, not to mention all the regulatory hurdles that are still there for for self-driving cars, right? It it is easier, even for a big company like Google, to partner rather than do it all on itself. It's a car. It's much, much harder to do a car than to build a phone or whatever. And there really aren't a lot of contract manufacturers out there to build your car. So I I think that does make sense that they aren't going to go at it alone. Yeah, it's kind of a shame, though. I was kind of hoping to to ride one of those cars around. Yeah. (laughs) For more about these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. Thanks for listening. And we are back and we have a wish list All of right. what people want All right. out of the iPhone Bring in 2017. On. How about really? unbreakable screens? Uh, uh, we're that, getting remember there. Remember that rumor? Mm-hmm. The ta- sapphire screen? The sapphire screen? That's oh, that's that's a scratch-proof screen. Scratch-proof. I guess it's not. scratch You're right. That can break. It can yeah. shatter. I mean, nothing out there shatter. is truly unbreakable, but there are plenty no. of more durable options. Well, there's, there's the... Uh, get, it's getting there. What is it's it? The, uh, the, what's the Motorola? Which? Turbo? Droid Turbo? Droid something? I don't know. The one that had like the shatterproof screen. If you want a shatterproof screen, that one was, get plastic. That, that's exactly what is, it was. It was right. it was basically layers of plastic. Uh, and I think it didn't actually break under our test until we took a pickaxe to it. Right. So it actually was pretty damn. Plastic is probably the, the durable. most durable, yep. but it's more likely to scratch. And it's also just kind of, you know, it's, cheap. it's cheaper. Cheap it's, it's kind of like flimsy. And yeah. that's why they went with glass. And yep. I know a lot of people complain about Corning and Gorilla Glass, which is used in most of these flagship phones, but um, they do make them better every year. But Slightly it, better, yeah. Right, but they're still going to break under certain conditions, especially after a year or two or three. So, yeah. Big City Boy in the chat's calling out, has anyone done the upgrade yet? The recent upgrade, 10, what is it, 10-2? No, no, yeah. Oh, I did it I yesterday. You did? Yeah, Any I mean, issues? I didn't notice anything new about it. Nothing it didn't drastic, break right? my phone, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's... That's good that's news. Big, that's a big One. plus. Hey, hey, don't take that for granted. No, that no, you happen. can't anymore, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to try out, wasn't it the new like TV app or something? That's right. Oh, I wanted the, to test the it TV out. search app? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to give that a go, but I haven't tried it yet. But I did upgrade. It seems fine. Nothing changed with my phone, so go for it. Do we think we're going to skip over the 7S and go straight to an 8? I think so. And you think there's going to be uh, Bluetooth 5? I still say they should call it iPhone X. I think they... Come on. So much cooler. Come on, you're listening. X is it's for not extreme. 1997, <laughs> Roger. I like that name. I like that name. I know really? Tim iPhone Cook, X. That's Tim Cook listens cool. to the show, and I know he's <laughs> Tim. Oh. Tim, go for iPhone uh, X. No one listens to the show. <laughs> we are talking to you. We, we're talking to Brian. <laughs> uh, do you think 2017 will be a big year for the watch? It'll it'll have to be a bigger year. Definitely, I mean, it, it's. I mean, it kind of make or break, kind of right? Two whole no, whole years. no, it's. I don't think it's make I, or break. I think it's incremental improvements, and they're they are selling them reasonably well. They're they're going to keep improving it slowly, slowly, but it's not going to be a big product for look, them. Look, if they could look, if they could figure out a couple of things, the design. I kind of hope they have a circular watch. Mm-hmm. If they could get it to be standalone, like LTE, extend the battery life and make it thinner. This is a huge wish list. Wish list. It's actually rather physically difficult to do. Right. If not impossible. All that, yeah, not impossible, but if they figure all that out, you know, the software is really improved, actually. Like, I've been talking to Scott about Apple Watch software, and it's it's gotten better over time. So. Right. But what's the cheapest one? What is it, 350 Uh, Yeah, the Sport or whatever. Right. And that's after you already bought, you know, whatever other Apple products you got. So it's still, you know, yes, it's a cost. It is. And for now, they're, look, they're going after affluent consumers who have the disposable income, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's the market so far. Yeah. Not quite as mass market as an iPhone. You don't absolutely need a, a watch, but for who they're going after, I mean, there could be demand. Sure. And a bigger overarching question, do you think the era of Cook can really bring back that um, innovation and reinvent themselves the way Jobs was kind of notorious for doing? That's, I feel like, the constant debate yeah. about Cook. I mean, he is... He's definitely a guy who can make the the trains run on time, but right. he's not. He's a good businessman, but he's not a visionary per se. And yeah. that's, that's that's always throwing out there for him. for jobs. It's, it's a vast generalization, is, but I think it's it's mostly true. Well, what we've seen over the past couple of years from Apple is we're we're going to take the same product and make it smaller and make it or bigger. Make it bigger. Right. And I, I do like the idea of creating something like um, like an iPhone Pro or whatever with the OLED screen that they're going right. to have a right. higher priced iPhone. So apparently there are going to be three different ones. There's going to be the iPhone, the iPhone Plus. I don't, I don't like that idea. Yeah. I am not a big fan. Like it totally goes against what Steve Jobs was pushing for, like one simple device. Mm-hmm. 
like we've got a one to two to like two with multiple sizes and colors. And now we're going to go to three. I mean, it starts to get kind of confusing after yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah, I I totally hear that. However, <clears throat> and it just know, it gives them an excuse to bump up the price even further. I, right? I've, I, I thought that the pros, the concept of the pros made sense. So maybe introducing that in some way to the iPhones. I just felt like the pro was really there like because they couldn't get enough OLED screens. Mm-hmm. That they're just like, why don't we just create like a whole another tier and then charge another $100 charge for it. like maybe 200 Because we can't get it. enough screens for every phone. Yeah. Let's just make it an exclusive thing and then make it even more expensive. Needless to say, they've got to do something really big with this one, I would say. Yeah, I think absolutely. The, the expectations are, are sky high for this phone. Yeah, because the iPhone 7 really wasn't... I, I get it. It's selling. It's doing well. But it really was from a design perspective. Oh, absolutely. It's it like the design ho-hum. team has taken a break for two years, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with the iPhone 6 design. It's a really nice design. And I say this, by the way, in full disclosure, as I hold my iPhone 7. Which, which I did I, not upgrade to an iPhone 7. I did upgrade, so. Yeah. So I'm sticking with the iPhone 6. I'm probably going to buy a new battery to keep it lasting for another year. And then we'll see what the iPhone, whatever, 7S or 8 looks Eight, like. 9. So, Maybe again, they'll just mess close, with us and just say iPhone 9. This close to buying a Google Pixel on Cyber Monday. I couldn't pull Actually, the Actually, they might keep the iPhone 8 because 8 is a lucky number in uh, Chinese culture. Mm-hmm. And China is its biggest market. So that could be that could be a thing. Well, that's interesting because Pamela's thinking they might change the entire naming convention. To what? Just Hasn't really said. They, Apple I phone. think they are going to change the naming of iPhones. They did get rid of. To they, Apple they don't phone? do the i Ugh. thing anymore. So if yeah, they, they have stopped it. They have, it's weird. They've like really they gone away. An Apple phone, which is which terrible. sounds weird. It's so tied oh, to like weird. the early two thousands, though. Mm-hmm. Like we do need to break away from that. But that's what Apple wants. Because everyone right? ripped it off too. It's true, but iPhone is such an iconic name that uh, it would be pretty surprising if they dropped it entirely. No, and they, I don't. And there's I don't too think, much. There's too much value in that that name. Yeah, and I don't think Apple Phone sounds good at all. So I mean, they could do what they did with the iPad for a while. Like they just call it the iPhone, right? Like that's it. No number, nothing. It's like this is the iPhone. Ugh. <laughs> there's a lot of hope for a new MacBook Air as well. I don't think. Oh, I don't think sorry, guys. I, think, well, I, I hate think to break been, it to you. They. They basically kept the uh, the MacBook Air in circulation because they know people want it. They have no real intention of upgrading ever. They really that was want proven you, this year. Yeah, they really want you to go and just spend more money on the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Air is there so they can say they have a low-cost option. They don't really care whether or not you buy it. They want you to buy the Pro. It's pretty disappointing. But yeah, the MacBook Pro with no touch bar this year is basically the your MacBook upgraded Air. MacBook Air. Yeah. And Which is way more expensive. It is way more expensive. Yeah. And for somebody that uses a MacBook Air, all I really wanted to see was them to get the bezel down, you know, so it would be a bigger screen in the same body and maybe a couple more upgrades, some more High resolution you know, specs display. Feeds. I feel like the MacBook Air. High resolution display, absolutely. MacBook Air's display is just woefully, woefully behind. There are a the lot of things that yeah. just clearly they needed to do, but they haven't done it and they're probably not going to do it. Yeah. Which is too bad. Pamela clarifies that they're just going to do away the numbering system. It'll just be That's the what, I, that's what I said. Yep. Yeah. The iPhone. You and Pamela. I know. Same page. And one, one to close out on, our buddy Michael Brown. Here's a good question. If any other company, Google, Samsung, et cetera, took a two-year break on being innovative, would you still buy a Pixel or a Galaxy? Uh, Very no, good question. No. God, no. When, why not? Why would that put you off? Uh, just... Uh, because technology moves Apple, so quickly. So Apple has, but people no, keep buying iPhones. No, no, look. Here's why. Out of loyalty. Here's why. It's not just loyalty. If you're Samsung, if you're Google, whatever, if you take a break, there are like 15 other companies building Android phones that are coming out like next month. And so if you take a break for a year or two, even just a year, everyone else is going to lap you. With, with an iPhone, you basically, if you're an iPhone user, you're just going to upgrade to an iPhone. There's no other option for you. You don't really if think If you're going to live in that iOS Yeah, if you're going to live in that world, you don't, there's no other option for you to go to Android. I mean, some people do, but it's rather difficult. Uh, Apple has been known for its, the loyalty of its customers, right? So uh, regardless, if they take a break in design or whatever, whatever new product comes out, Apple people will go and buy it. But if you're – if on the Android side, if, say, Samsung takes a break, well, well I could consider LG, Sony, Motorola, Google – there are just so many other options out there. They're all like putting out their best game month after month. There's always going to be a better Android phone out there. So yeah, we've options. seen that. We've so, seen the negative side to that competition as well. The Note Seven, Samsung Note Seven, yep. blew up because Samsung was trying to lap the competition, yep. lard as much technology into that phone as possible, and it just didn't work. Yeah, it just 
you know. So if the iPhone 8 comes out as a loyal, dedicated, long-time iPhone religion three, <laughs> re-upper, and it, the iPhone 8X null, whatever it is, comes out, yeah. and it's just iPhone 7S Plus, maybe, kind of, <sighs> sort of, you're in? Probably. All right. But Not me. Like, Not to me. be fair, I'm also no using a Samsung phone, and mm-hmm. I have a Pixel phone. Like, I kind of share That's your love. job. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I am I'm one of those idiots that want to have the, the latest and greatest. All right. We have to wrap it up kind of early today. But yep. one last thought that I loved in the chat, if they name the next iPhone something salty, salty like, uh, you know, against the Galaxy Note 7, they call it the iPhone Fire. I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. Well, there's the Fire phone already. So that's already got some Wow. That would be already. knocking two companies at the same time. I love it. Fire. The iPhone Fire. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that was just off the top of my head. A huge middle finger to everybody. I'm sure there. there's going to start the change.org petition right now. <laughs> I'm sure there can be better suggestions out there when we come back tomorrow we want to hear your suggestions iPhone for what Blaze. the next iphone should be called i like that one. all right all right yeah if you liked anything you saw or hear, heard here check us out on cnet our podcast is also available on itunes tune in stitcher soundcloud feedburner and of course google play music see y'all tomorrow later Whoop.